Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm playing some more Total War Warhammer. We're taking a look at another battle, uh, online battle replay, between myself and a Greenskins player in the classic Empire vs. Greenskins matchup. So, uh, I'm using my Reichsgard build, which you guys might have seen before on the channel. Um, it does have a main line of uh, Sigmar Sons with two flagellants on each flank to form an unbreakable center, as well as a swordsman on each flank for some additional support. Uh, four free company militia in the back with a light wizard with the nets of Amantok, as well as four spearmen. Uh, Boris Toddbringer, of course, with the midland, or sorry, a general of the empire on this build, uh, just to cheap out a bit with the healing potion. And uh, we do have four units of Reichsguard, one of them being the Zintler's Reichsguard. So, uh, my opponent's force, and uh, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this replay, is because this guy did ask me some questions. We played a couple games. Um, and so I wanted to show this to you just as kind of a, you know, to go through maybe a few beginner's tips on what I like to do in certain matchups and just, um, you know, some tenets I like to follow in general. And uh, don't take any of these as hard, fast rules, but um, you can see, and a lot of my replays you'll see a similar theme, um, is that uh, my forces outnumber my opponent's forces. And in this game, um, you'll see the outcome. Uh, spoiler alert, I win. Um, and then the game we played after, my opponent was asking me, how do you get such a big army? Um, you know, you have way more units than I do. So, um, we will talk about that. So, if you look at the two armies, we'll put it in slow motion here, just as we've talked about a couple things. Um, for my opponent's force, he has a main line of three black orcs, which are all very elite infantry, with one orc biggin on each flank. He's got two uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins, the Rusty Heirs, the Arachnorok Queen, uh, Night Goblin War Boss, Night Goblin Shaman, and two Goblin Big Bosses. So let's talk about a few things. Um, and this is what you guys will hear me refer to as unit density. Um, I like to typically bring armies of 15 units. Um, sometimes lower depending on the faction uh, about 12 usually minimum um, and I mean for my opponent's force he has a comparable let's see he's got one two three four one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, units in total besides the four heroes whereas I only have two heroes and I've got one two three four five with four more on the flanks bringing up to nine plus 8, 16 units. So you can see there the major difference in unit density. Another thing to consider is that Black Orcs only come in 60 models, whereas Swordsmen and Flagellants and other Empire Infantry come in 90 models. Uh, orc Biggins come in 75, so they have a few more unit models. But in general, the issue that my opponent's going to face in this replay is that he's very much outnumbered. And uh, let's talk about why. First of all, uh, this Arachnorok Queen is hugely expensive and is a single model monster. And against the Empire, I would generally recommend against bringing large, expensive, single model monsters because of their superior ranged firepower. Uh, their gunpowder units are very, very strong, especially when combined with the Nets of Amantok. And uh, although the Arachnorok Queen has 150 armor and won't take a whole lot of damage from the Free Company Militia in this matchup, uh, you know, it's just generally not advisable to bring large expensive monsters because they tend not to be cost effective against the Empire. So if he had cut this and brought some cheaper troops, you know, he would have had a much wider army. Um, as well, he does have four heroes. So, you know, you guys will occasionally see me run with two or three heroes. Um, usually not, though. Usually the most I'll run is two. And uh, that's just so that I can free up extra funds to bring full units because, again, you need more unit models on the field. Um, as well, against the Empire, you generally don't need super elite infantry. Um, typically, you know, low tier infantry will trade fairly well just because Empire State troops aren't great. Uh, Flagellants have zero armor, and uh, pretty much everything except great swords is not excellent in terms of infantry. And so, low tier infantry of other factions can and will beat. Uh, a lot of Empire basic infantry like Swordsmen and Flagellants. So, you don't necessarily have to go super elite like this. Um, 
you can see here some beautiful charges going down of the Reichsguard over on this flank, and they are going to be able to do a considerable amount of damage, these Orc Boar Biggins. Um, and so, yeah, that's mostly my point, is just, uh, you know, you can cheap out a little bit on some of these things. Um, let's take a look at his abilities here. Uh, he did cut all the abilities and, you know, has uh, fairly stripped down all of these heroes, so they're cheaper than they would normally be. But still, four heroes is cutting into your army density quite a bit, especially when you have the Arachnorot Queen and you're bringing a small elite army like this. Uh, typically, I'm not a big fan of small elite armies, so we'll go to full speed here and you guys can watch the battle. And uh, you can see the balance of power is uh, fairly, slightly, I wouldn't say fairly, but slightly in my opponent's favor at this point, just because Black Orcs are very powerful. But uh, you can see here, with my cavalry and uh, mobility advantage, I'm able to you know, force him off balance and force him to kind of engage piecemeal. Now, these Black Orcs will carve through the Swordsmen, there's no doubt about that, they'll win. Um, but with support, hopefully, that my Swordsmen can pull through, you know, if I get some good rear charges and so on. Uh, the Arachnorok Queen's going to come in here, but the Terror isn't pertinent because all these units here in the center are unbreakable. They may potentially tear out these Swordsmen here. Um, they are wavering right now. You can see a Nets of Amontok coming down here in the center. And the Black Orcs are going to get countercharged, which is bad for them because they do have a pretty decent charge bonus. So uh, you can see them getting wrapped up on the flank as well by those Reichsguard, getting a really nice charge. And uh, Itchy Nuisance going down, but it's not going to actually hit these Reichsguard. It's only hitting the Flagellants. So we do land uh, the General of the Empire in here. He's going to do quite a bit of damage. And uh, yeah, you can see just, uh, just not able to account for all the units that I have. And... Uh, that being the result, these this reserve force is able to just sit back and fire away and do what it needs to do to be effective. And I'm able to cycle in and out here, um, you know, with my cav. And you can see these uh, orc biggins are having a really bad time. With only 50 armor, they'll take a ton of damage from heavy shock cavalry. So they're going to be out of there shortly. Uh, these black orcs, having taken a ton of damage from a rear charge and from the general of the empire, are going to uh, route maybe. We'll see, they're wavering. Uh, here, my general does get a little bit out of position, which is not great, because he does still have these Boar Boy Biggins here. So um, I'm going to leave him in, in here for a bit too long, and he does take quite a bit of damage. But uh, you can see just the rear charges and just the overwhelming numbers um, are just not allowing the green skin units to be very effective. Uh, the Arachnorot Queen is in here. It's taken a little bit of damage, but so far it's fairly healthy. It's been able to summon a few Spiderlings. But it just hasn't gotten a ton of kills. I mean, it's got 45 kills, but those are mostly against cheap infantry. So not great. Um, and these Orc Boar Boy Biggins have been sitting dormant back here for far too long. Um, they could have definitely dealt with, helped to deal with these Reichsguard, helped to deal with the General of the Empire, perhaps. Um, you can see those big bosses were able to put down the General of the Empire. So, you know, um, you know the, the big bosses on spiders are definitely valuable, and they're fairly cheap as far as heroes go. But still, bringing four heroes, you know, is going to cut into your army density, like I was saying. So, uh, you can see the the Free Company Militia aren't going to do a ton of damage, but given enough time, they will work through the Arachnorot Queen. So, uh, it's going to try and pull around, but it's fairly isolated now over here. So, you can see the uh, General of the Empire is uh, flying back towards the safety of his lines. And uh, we're going to net down the Arachnorot Queen here and uh, just start shooting at it with all these Free Company. Did get some uh, splatterlings into these free company, but they'll be able to fend them off without too much trouble. Um, you can see now that the front line is somewhat collapsed, I'm just bringing up the reserve of spears to just tie down my opponent's forces and just continue to allow the free company to shoot. Um, you know, since I still have somewhat of a numbers advantage. Um, back here, we're going to get some Reichsguard routing, which is a bit unfortunate. My lord dived back in and is going to get fairly well savaged here, um, but he will be able to pull out and escape. Over here, these Black Orcs getting pretty much finished off by these Reichsguard on that charge. Um, they're not going to like that at all. These Orc Biggins will try and come support, but as they pull away, they're going to take quite a bit of damage from these Swordsmen. And, uh, you know, the Spearmen won't do a ton of damage, but, um, you know, any free attacks that these guys can get on the Orc Biggins are it's great for me. So, uh, these Reichsguard are going to get caught by the... Uh, Orc War Biggins, which is unfortunate for them, but we did land home on the Rusty Airs and are going to be taking them out. So uh, now you can see the Night Goblin War Boss is isolated over here by himself, taking quite a bit of damage from the Spears and just not having a good time. And yeah, you can see my opponent's forces now. The Even though the balance of power is still fairly even, 
Um, you know, he's mostly just got heroes and the Arachnorock Queen. Um, you know, in terms of his unit models, he's only down to about 183. And you can see I started with more than, well, yeah, more than double the amount of unit models that he did. So this is what I'm saying when I talk about army density and, um, you know, how important it is. So... Yep, these spiderlings are uh, sadly not very good anymore just because the cooldown on them is very long and they were never great combatants to begin with. So it's really, you know, it's sad that they nerfed that. The Arachnorock Queen was almost an automatic pick before in a lot of matchups. But, uh, you know, with that nerf, I just don't think it'll generally be cost effective. You can see it's got 67 kills, but, uh, you know, taking a fair amount of fire here. And even though these lowly free company militia don't have a ton of armor piercing, they do have a bit. And, uh, you know, two armor piercing is not a lot, but still, they'll be able to do damage over time. And uh, you can see here, my lord got routed off, unfortunately, but the Night Goblin War Boss is getting surrounded and beat down by Reichsguard here. He's not in a good place. Um, <laughs> the Knights of the Empire care not for the filthy goblin. They'll chase him away. So, yeah, you can see things now looking pretty grim for the Greenskins. Um, the Arachnorock Queen is going down, and my opponent does admit defeat. So, let's take a look at another replay, and we can talk a bit more about unit density. Um, we'll take a look at the breakdown briefly here. You can see this unit of Black Orcs did pay itself off to an extent. Got 108 kills and a Chevron, so, you know, Black Orcs are legit. You guys will see them in my armies. I just don't usually bring more than two, sometimes three. But in that case, I have some other cheap troops just to help fill out the army density. Um, for this, um, I'm not a big fan of the Night Goblin War Boss. I know I see him a lot on on tournament replays and different things, but uh, he's cheap and he's kind of crappy. And uh, yeah, I would honestly rather bring one of the legendary lords because I think the green skins have really good legendary lords. Um, the Night Goblin Shaman and the two Goblin Big Bosses, you know, I understand the Hero Squad, but just bringing this many, it, like I was saying, cuts in your army density. So if you'd cut the Arachnorock Queen and, uh, you know, maybe he could have brought some Savages, cut these uh, Orc Biggins and bring just the main line of Savages with maybe a couple of Nasty Skulkers to help deal with the Cav, uh, you know, it's different things. The Mangy Marauders are usually a good pick against the Empire. Um, but yeah, let's let's take a look at this next replay, and we can talk a bit more about unit density. And uh, so, as you can see in this army, I've got a Gobbo force, and this is, um, you know, a full army, full twenty units, and with cash to spare, as you can see, because I've got chevrons on a lot of my guys. And the only time I would put this many chevrons is if you have a full army and you have cash to spare. Generally, I would say spend all your money first, and if you have like a hundred, you know, fifty gold maybe left, then you spend that on a few chevrons on key units. But whereas in this army I have a full army, you know, with extra money to spend, I can use that to buff up these goblin units. So Full, full army of 20 units, um, and my opponent has a pretty large army as well. You can see he's outnumbered still. Um, he's got under a thousand units, whereas I've got about 1,500 unit models. So, yeah, this is kind of the reverse role of the the last one where we had a you know a larger empire force and a smaller greenskin force. Um, as the Greenskins, especially against the Empire and the Wood Elves and a couple of other factions. Um, Bretonia, I like to use Warzag just because Foot of Gork's really good. But we do indeed have Skarsnik. So yes, the, uh, the nasty, scheming Goblin himself with his Prada and Gobla, his pet, are going to be leading this force of Goblins. We do have a main line of uh, Night Goblins with the two regiments of Renown uh, night goblins mixed in. We've got a nasty skulker on each flank. A regular goblin here in the center for some fodder. We've got night goblin archers as well as rusty airs. Hammer of Gork, uh, another goblin here. Uh, spider rider and a squig. And the same here. Uh, I think I casted a game with this a few days ago, so you may, guys may have seen this build before. Um, as well as, of course, the um, wolf rider archers, obligatory wolf rider archers. 
My opponent's got a steam tank, which is a good pick against the green skins. Uh, the terror is good, and it has a good ranged attack. A couple of empire knights, which, you know, definitely a good pick. Need shock cavalry against the green skins. Um, he's got a main line of swordsmen here. Uh, looks like with halberdiers in the rear, as well as a spearman on this flank, as well as on this flank. Two crossbowmen and a handgunner. Led by Boris Toddbringer, Jade Wizard, and an Empire Captain. So, hoping to get some healing on these uh, high value units. And again, you know, the Steam Tank's a good pick. Empire Captain's a, you know, a decent pick. But with these heroes and with this single model, you know, monster, I guess you could say, um, it's just not, not gonna allow him to have enough units to deal with everything. So, you can see over here these Empire Knights getting caught out by spider riders and squigs and uh, nasty skulkers and they are not having a good time at all just getting dragged into the dirt and bitten by squigs and shanked and poisoned just not a good time for them at all so they're gonna get routed off with minimal losses on the part of the goblins which is never a good thing for the proud empire knights uh... you can see the gob uh... The, excuse me the hammer of gork goblin rock lobber is doing some decent damage to these swordsmen here and um, the Empire Knights were chasing the uh, Mangy Marauders and these other Wolf Rider Archers, but uh, you know they did come back here for support, and now the Crossbowmen are going to respond. This is exactly what you want to do: is use your range units. You can see here my opponent just doesn't have enough melee infantry to deal with all the um, with all the goblins, so he is going to send his steam tank forward, which is pretty good. It forces some of my guys to get interrupted in their charge and blob up and uh, kind of get a little bit of a piecemeal engagement here, but he's not bringing up any additional forces to capitalize on that, and so I'm able to uh, effectively pull some of my units away and, you know, start to get towards these handgunners. Nasty Skulkers are tying up these spearmen on the flank. Um, over here, these Empire Knights are again chasing off into the Shadow Realm, which, you know, you need them to stay close by. Uh, we can see some uh, fanatics going through here. They got some decent work done. Uh, help disrupt the formation a bit, as well as applying a bit of a debuff there. Uh, if I remember what it is... Uh, no, that's just itchy nuisance. So you can see uh, Skarsnik in here doing his shanking. Goblin's chewing on some state troops. Gobbling them down. Beautiful. The uh, nasty little goblins are getting in here. And Boris Toddbringer will try and vanquish them, but uh, we're going to get Skarsnik over here on him. And with the armor-piercing anti-large of Skarsnik, uh, Boris is not going to have a good time in that fight. You can see the steam tank is just continuing to be bogged down by night goblins and regular goblins, shot up by the rusty errors and this uh, other unit of night goblins. Still has 130 armor after being sundered, so, you know, not taking a ton of damage from that ranged fire, but uh, it is consistent. We're going to bring now some squigs in for some armor piercing and the spider riders just to tie it down. Uh, however, he's going to get in this mainline fight and be able to... Actually, both the one unit's unbreakable, the other is immune to psychology, so that'll be okay. Uh, you can see now finally pressing around the flank with these extra units here. Um, these these goblins here are content to just sit back and guard. Uh, we're chasing away these crossbowmen. The Empire Knights that came over here got uh, got into the the Meiji Marauders a bit, but took a ton of damage and now just uh, you know pulled way too far away from the fight to be effective. And here we got more fire coming in. Uh, Skarsnik is now. Uh, battling Boris Toddbringer, and despite the regeneration of Toddbringer, you know, and uh, the support from these state troops, Skarsnik will definitely put a beat down on him with the, uh, yeah, you can see he's down to less than half health, uh, despite all of his, you know, healing and everything, so definitely not a good time. He's going to try and get out of there wisely and uh, leave Skarsnik to fight those halberdiers, which is not going to be a good time for them by any means. Um, the steam tank is just continuing to pull around and not get tied down in any one place for too long. That's good. However, it's still taking consistent range fire from these uh, Gobble missiles and uh, continuing to be sundered. Still 130 armor. That's that's intense, but uh, it does get a nice terror out and breaks up a lot of these units here. They're going to quickly come back, and at this point my opponent's forces are fairly tattered, even though the balance of power is pretty close. Um, not doing too well at this point. Lost both of his Empire Knights. You know, the steam tank is getting pretty low, and once that thing's gone, it's going to be in for a bad time. Uh, over here, the Jade Wizard's trying to support here against these Unbreakable Goblins, who are doing quite a bit of damage here, having racked up uh, an impressive number of kills, 67 and 68 on those guys, respectively, and still climbing. So, definitely great for them. 
Uh, the hammer of Gork is continuing to fire in here and get some great work done. Uh, Scarsnick is holding here, trying to get some work done, chasing after the steam tank. Uh, the armor-piercing anti-large will apply, so he wants to get in there and take this thing out, terrifying all his troops, and uh, he does get some good damage in there. You can see, uh, yeah, about 300 damage. So, good for, good for Scarsnick battling the tank. And uh, this Empire Captain's going to get back in here into these Night Goblin Archers. The Rusty Arrows are now out of ammo, so they're just in here tying down Toddbringer for a moment. We're going to start rallying some of these forces that have regrouped. And uh, because my opponent's forces were so much smaller, even though he got a good terror route and some other things went his way, um, you know, he didn't have the units to capitalize on some of those mistakes that he forced. So, Smoke Bomb there, just allowing those Spearmen to be ridden down, and we're just mopping up at this point. Um... The steam tank is almost gone. Gonna get caught here by these squigs, and uh, he is gonna drop an earth blood, it looks like. Try and heal it and keep it in the fight, but, um, however, it's still taking quite a bit of armor piercing damage from these mage marauders. Or, no, it looks like they're actually out of ammo, so it should be able to tear route off these squigs and still survive, but, uh, you know, even the low armor piercing of these regular wolf rider archers did do a bit of damage there. Um, you can see the uh, Lore of Life Spellsinger is fl or not Spellsinger, Jade Wizard uh, is fleeing from Skarsnik. Um, Boris is pretty much at his healing cap at this point, so he, any all the damage this take, that he takes at this point will, you know, be applied and not be able to be healed. The uh, Goblin Shaman came back from routing, so he's dropping another itchy nuisance there, and uh, yeah, not having a good time. We do have these hand gunners here who are going to get shot by the Night Goblin Archers. The steam tank is still holding, but now about to go down to the uh, nasty skulkers here. The mage marauders as well, just uh, pulling out their daggers, trying to shank this thing right in the engine, and it does go down. So, great work from those armor-piercing troops, and uh, despite the scary tank, the gobblers were able to take it down. The balance of power shifts at that point quite heavily in my favor, and uh, the forces of the Empire not having a good time. Force is down to about 60% uh, HP or so and uh, not able to heal anymore, so he's having a bad time, he's gonna try and pull away, but, uh, you know, this captain now being left alone here is very, very shaky on his leadership, he's dropping down to six, and uh, they're gonna be routing fairly soon there, so, fun time, uh, gotta love the Gabo power, and, uh, yeah, well played to my opponents, enjoyed playing those, just thought I'd give you guys a little uh, you know, pointers and a few tips on army density and kind of my philosophy, um, especially when playing against the Empire. You know, I like to bring high army density, and in almost any matchup, I would say having a larger army is more beneficial. You know, there are some obvious caveats to that, and we'll go through that as I start to do my, um, my series that's uh, sort of a beginner guide. We'll talk through a lot of those concepts. Um, just wanted to show you guys some of these things in the meantime, because I know some of you guys may be beginners, maybe just starting in multiplayer. So yeah, my advice is to bring, uh, you know, about 12 to 20 units, depending on the matchup. And, you know, you definitely want to bring more than 10, always. Otherwise, you're just not going to have enough to deal with what your opponent brings. So, well played, fun fun battle. Hope you guys enjoyed watching those gobos get in there and do some work. We'll take a look at this breakdown. Uh, 114 kills from the Hammer of Gork is some great work. 135 on these nasty skulkers. Uh, you know, just great work across the line from the gobos in general. Aside from a few units who got terror routed off by the steam tank. Uh, the... Yeah, just a fairly even spread. Only this gobo really stands out. The And the uh, Hammer of Gork... The rest, you know, didn't rack up a ton of kills, but just consistent damage all the way across. You know, Skarsnik getting that good damage on Boris, and on the Jade Wizard, and on the Steam Tank. You know, just everyone contributed for the most part, so... Hope you guys enjoyed these casts, and uh, hope you learned something from that. Let me, let me know what you guys think in terms of, you know, army density, how big or small, you know, how low tier or elite you like to make your armies. Let me know what you think, and if you're, enjoying the, if you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.